Uh, it's a privilege to work with zoo animals, but it's also a huge challenge. Um, it's fantastic to be able to get that close to a huge variety of different species and to be able to make a difference by working with other teams to sort of maximise their health and welfare. Um, zoos do a great job at conservation, um, but to do that, we need to produce not just numbers of animals, but to maintain that genetic diversity of all the species that we have. People think of zoos as a place that there to increase the animal population and give us a, sort of, um, a fail-safe that we can rely on if they become extinct in the wild. But to do that, we've got to make sure that the genetics are preserved as well. Um, and we have to use contraception to stop us from over-representing certain genes and to make sure that certain genes become represented. Um, so that's the main purpose of it, to increase that genetic diversity. We also use it to help keep some animals healthy. So uh, animals in zoos tend to live a lot longer than they would in the wild and because of that they tend to get diseases which old animals get like organ failure, liver failure, kidney failure, but they still get pregnant and if they do that can cause some serious problems for the animal and it may mean the difference between a, a live animal that's coping and an animal that's just not coping anymore. So by using contraceptives uh, we can help to stop them from getting pregnant and maintain good quality of life in their old age. Um, we can also use it if we've got diseases like some reproductive tumours are stimulated by hormones, reproductive hormones. If we can stop those reproductive hormones or reduce them to a really low level, then that might slow down the tumour growth and allow our animals to have a good quality of life for a lot longer. There may also be times when animals can't be moved out of zoos for breeding programmes. So for instance, if a zoo has a disease problem, like um, bovine tuberculosis, the government may stop animal moves from one zoo to another or even from one country to another and in that case the zoo can face problems with overpopulation and so we might need to stop breeding for a short period of time until that disease situation can be sorted out uh, and we can breed again and it's important then to be able to use something that allows the animal to come back into a breeding situation because those genes may be important and we don't want to lose them forever. So although contraceptives can be incredibly beneficial uh, and allow us to manage animals better, there are risks associated with them. And most of those risks are because of our lack of knowledge about the different species' reproductive cycles and how the hormones wax and wane throughout those cycles. And the contraceptives work by altering those hormones. So for instance, um, we know that giving oestrogen to many animals will stop them from ovulating, but oestrogens can also cause bone marrow suppression, um, anemia, um, and so they've been found not to be safe in the majority of species, so we don't use them. Uh, progestins, which are commonly used, can cause weight gain. Um, and that sometimes can be a benefit because they can actually be used on animals that are, have got a very poor appetite as a stimulant to make them uh, want to eat and improve their weight. But in most animals that is a, a side effect that we don't want. Um, they can also affect different species in different ways. So progestins in um, canids, for instance, can cause a lot of problems and infection in the uterus whereas in many other species they work extremely well without side effects. So like with humans, some contraceptives suit some humans better than others. Uh, and we often have to try several different types before we find one that suits them. So that's the same for animals. Um, you can't always use the first one that you want to. Uh, and the final risk that is a big one um, is you can change an animal's appearance. So if you contracept a male, particularly something like a lion, where they've got obvious secondary sexual characteristics like manes, that mane may disappear. 
uh, in some black lemurs, if you give them contrac if you give the females contraceptives, their coat colour can change and they can start to take on the appearance of a male, and that can be very confusing for the animals themselves. Most of them uh, come in the form of pills, injections, or as an implant. The tablets are less stressful to give to the animals because usually you can give them in feed. With injections, we sometimes use the dart gun, but some animals are trained to stand at an enclosure edge and we can hand inject them, and that has minimal stress for them as well. The implants are normally administered under anaesthetic. If we're going to use a contraceptive, there's several questions we've got to ask ourselves. The first one is how long do you want that contraceptive to last? Is it just a few months to tide you over a sort of difficult situation or is it going to be several years? So a lot of the implants will last for perhaps one to three years or even six months to three years. Some of the injections are just for a few months and the tablets might only last as long as they're being given. The second thing is, do we want the animal to carry on showing signs of oestrus if it's a female and for mating to still occur within the group? Sometimes that will help to maintain a better social structure. Um, some contraceptives will allow that to happen, but others will get rid of all signs of oestrus. So things like sexual swellings in baboons, changes in coloration of skin. Um, and the males won't know that the females are cycling because they effectively aren't anymore uh, and so mating won't occur and sometimes that can lead to a bit of a breakdown in the social group so that can be a problem. But mostly when we're trying to decide what contraceptive um, we're going to use it depends on what the animal's reproductive cycle is like and what the hormones do with that reproductive cycle. So for instance, we can use the progestins in many species, but we can't use them in equids, and we don't use them for long periods in canids or felids because they have side effects. Some of the uh, contraceptives called gonadotrophin-releasing hormone agonists are used in many different species and seem to be working pretty well in the majority of them. But in birds and reptiles, we found that there's some resistance from the body to them. So you can give them once and they'll work, but if you try and give them a second time, they don't work. So that can be frustrating. Um, and then there are another type, which is a, basically a vaccine. Um, so you give the animal a first dose, then you give another dose about a month later, and then you give repeated doses through its lifetime or for the period you wanted contraceptive. And they make the animal produce antibodies to parts of its own reproductive system so that they can do things like stop an egg becoming implanted or stop the egg development uh, and produce um, contraception in that way. So all those need to be taken into consideration when you're trying to decide which one to use. And also your ease of how you're going to get that contraceptive into the animal because it might be that it's easy to give it tablets for one animal but for another individual darting it or giving an implant that lasts a lot longer is much more effective. It is a relatively new science. So we have uh, groups like EXAC, the European Group for Zoo Animal Contraception, which act as a database and they collect information from all the zoos that are using contraceptive. And that data can be collected together and used by people to inform us on the best choices um, for our contraceptive use in the future. So I think it's really valuable that not only are we using the contraceptives, but we're also gathering that information to try and improve the welfare of the animals that we use them in and to make them more effective. Sadly, um, the habitat for animals in the wild is decreasing. And while zoos can help to do in situ conservation work and preserve that habitat, they also need to preserve our species um, so that there are animals to put back if we need to get to that that point. And to do that well, we need to make sure that we've got large numbers of animals and that the genetic diversity is preserved. And contraceptives are a really good way of helping us to do that.